up, dudes? How's it going? So as you all know, there is a pandemic keeping us all locked indoors. And I, along with everyone else, has been researching to find the truth. And that's why I haven't said anything on this topic yet, because I didn't know what to say. But now I feel like I've found something worth talking about. I have to be very careful. I can't share my actual thoughts so much, because people that do, and that, that if their thoughts go against what World Health Organization is saying, then YouTube will ban you. So I have to be very careful. But I can show you this show that my sister recommended. It's a show called Utopia. It was on Channel 4 in the UK in 2013. It's a dark thriller conspiracy theory drama. The plot centers around a graphic novel called Utopia Experiments. Various groups and people are trying to find the manuscript so that they can uncover the truth and others to help cover up the conspiracy and to hide secret identities. Now I want to show you some scenes from the first season of this show because everything that happens uh, it's basically predicting what's currently happening. So yeah, the spoilers, just a heads up, if you haven't seen the show and you want to watch it, uh, pause this, save it for later. Uh, if you don't care, continue watching. Obviously this is, a, this is a show, it's all fiction. A lot of what they're saying, it matches up too close to what's currently happening. I just want to say now, before, I, before anything happens to this video, these aren't my opinions. I'm just showing you a TV show and comparing it to what's currently going on. I'm not going to say I believe in any of this, I just think it's very interesting, and I think you'll find it interesting too. Okay, without further ado, let's get into episode one. Very exciting. Well, yes, that is very. But we still have over 20 million shots of Tamiflu for the swine flu that never hit. Russian flu's been around forever. Michael. According to our research, the H1N1 pathogen, this new strain, is about to mutate and will have potential for mortality rates in the hundreds of thousands. We've made a thorough report. And we don't agree with it. Neither does the WHO or the Geneva Medical Institute. So there's a meeting between two vaccine companies, the evil sellers and the buyers. Uh, I'm sure you can tell which one's which. The sellers make up a report and estimate that the new strain is about to mutate with the potential of mortality rates in the hundreds of thousands. This is clearly a lie to sell thousands of vaccines to this company. I'm not, I'm not going to explain the show too much. Um, I'll just let you watch these clips and you can kind of figure it out. So the buyer then mentions the WHO, World Health Organization, um, saying they don't trust this report. This kind of gives WHO authority over health decisions and it kind of gives them credibility. Like they're like the people that you look up to to decide what's true and what's not. That's already flawed because then they decide to push a narrative. We have to kind of believe them because they are the top of the top. In the Shetland Islands, we can confirm two more people have now died, bringing the death toll to 11. That's 11 now dead on the Shetland island of Fetlark from the suspected outbreak of Russian flu. So there's a news report playing saying that 11 people have died in the Shetland islands off the coast of the UK from the Russian flu. That's the flu vaccine that they were trying to sell in the previous episode. So already like kind of light bulbs going off like, hmm, people just died of this flu that they were trying to sell the vaccine for? That's very convenient timing. The last thing your father was working on were viral delivery vectors that attack the human genome. And Tate, what did he say? He said that this is the end. He said that we are all finished. And he took his own life. Later in the episode, they are discussing a scientist, the main character's father, who is working on viral deliver vectors that attack the human genome which is a set of nuclear, nucleic acid sequences for humans, encoded as DNA within the 23 chromosomes, pairs in cell nuclei, and then the scientist took his own life. So a lot of those words I didn't understand. Basically he was creating a virus that attacks certain genomes. Something to do with DNA. I, d I didn't really understand this part, so I'm not going to try and pretend like I understand it. You want a sample? Yes, it's, it's, it's all filled. It, it's all in order. The, the, uh, the, the paperwork is... What do you want it for? Later again, there's a news report saying that the Shetland Islands are now under quarantine due to Russian flu outbreak. When I was watching the show, this is when I was like, hang on a second. This is currently happening. I've never watched a show where quarantine has like been a thing, except for like zombie movies. But the show says that there was a, a virus and they've had to quarantine the islands. 
What did Jessica tell you about her father's ideas, Ian? On racial purification? What? He's a fucking Nazi. Philip Carvel wrote a paper called The Survival of the Genome in which he advocated a human cull. This is the same man who became involved with weaponizing disease. Episode 3, they're talking about that same scientist saying he wrote a paper talking about a human cull. He also weaponized the disease. This was for racial purification. Essentially the same thing that Hitler was tr attempting, eradicating a race that he didn't like to kind of purify the planet. So he was trying to get blonde eye, <laughs> blue eye, blonde hair people to kind of be the only race. And he really didn't like Jews and I'm not sure why. I don't know much about Hitler. ...indicated that everyone who died had an underlying health problem. Later in the same episode, there's a news report. The news is reporting everyone who died of the Russian flu had underlying health problems. This is insinuating that the virus wasn't actually the cause of death, and in fact, these people were already sick or unwell, or that they caught this thing and that it was enough to push them over the edge. That's kind of similar to what we're hearing now. Like, we're hearing that the numbers are being inflated in hospitals, people are dying from other things, and then it's being blamed on. COVID. See, I can't really dive into this because this isn't this isn't really. I'm not trying to share what I'm reading. Like what I'm reading, I don't know. I don't know if I believe it or not. I, I just want you to understand that I'm just trying to share a TV show, and I think it's kind of weird that it matches up with what's happening right now. It gets weirder though. I promise. It gets weirder. by uh, now visits the Shetland Isles to collect a sample from one of the dead bodies. Something that isn't mentioned in the show, but you can clearly see it, is that the biohazard people come into the infected area, into the tents, and then they take their suits off. That hints that the vir virus in the show isn't real, and that they're just wearing the suits outside the tents for like the media and for the military um, who are present. Yeah, do you see what's going on yet? It's nice. I was in Hong Kong when SARS hit. They kept it locked down, but I thought, fuck that, I'm special. So I went in, had a look, found out it didn't exist. SARS didn't exist. No. The whole thing was just a series of unconnected respiratory infections. It took me under an hour to discover that there was no causal link. So I filed my report, and within a week, I was discredited, the search destroyed, fired. Well, I tried speaking up, everyone thought I'd just gone a bit David Ike. Well, but people died. SARS was started in November 2002. It lasted precisely seven months. By summer 2003, it no longer existed. The pandemic affected just 8,422 people and killed 916. Do you know how many people die each year from random respiratory problems? SARS did not exist. Next question. Why did they do it? Answer. I don't f***ing know. All I know was within the next few weeks I was embroiled in a sex scandal. In episode 4, the vaccine buyer delivers a piece of the body to, to a new scientist to investigate and find out the cause of death. Uh, the scientist then shares a story about SARS. He went in and found out that it didn't exist. The whole thing was a series of uncon unconnected respiratory infections. When he filed his report, he was d discredited. Um, this happens in the real world very often. When scientists or researchers or doctors discover something, discover the truth about something, um, often they are fired or discredited or made to be out like a crazy person or a conspiracy theorist. Then he mentions David Icke. Now, this is just a funny remark for British people that know who David Icke is. David Icke is made to look like a, a crazy person on TV, when in reality he's dedicated his life to discovering the truth and some of the things he's figured out, or some of the things he thinks he's figured out, um, seem very, very outrageous. Like, the world that he sees is horrible and he tries to share that with us 
And every time he does, people discredit him. Very interesting because David was very outspoken about COVID, saying there's more going on than we're led to believe. I won't go into detail about what he said. His channel was actually deleted off YouTube. He had 900,000 subscribers and they just, they banned him, they deleted it. And now anytime that he does a live stream on anybody else's channel, um, such as like London Real, they will ban the live stream while it's currently airing, uh, forcing him to go to like other websites. Now this happened last year with Alex Jones, if you guys remember that. Social media just discredits them, deletes them, um, tries to silence them in any way they can. Yeah, it's messy stuff. And now it's happening to Ike, David Ike, the man mentioned in this virus show. I thought that the coincidence was too, too funny. Um, if you know who David Icke is, or if you've listened to any of his stuff about COVID, um, it just makes the show a bit more scary that they mentioned that. It's, it's not what you think. Oh, Jesus Christ. It was chemical poisoning. No flu at all. You have no idea how powerful and rich they are. So the fact the scientist finds out the truth about what killed those 11 people on the island, it was chemical poisoning and not a virus. Now this is all fiction, this is all just a TV show. I'm not saying this is what's currently happening. I just think that it's very interesting. The scientist found out that it wasn't anything to do with flu. The whole thing was uh, a hoax. In the show, in the show, not real life, in the show. What if it's not the disease, it's selective? What if it's the cure? Russian flu? Call that to make in the vaccine. Right, how do you get flu? Somebody sneezes and you breathe it in. No, 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 you ingest it. Mostly you get it on your hands and you ingest it. So they adapt some fucking weapons grade flu virus so that it can be hidden in food. And call that make a vaccine that's only effective on certain races. I mean, after Fetler, people are terrified. One more outbreak like that and they'll be rioting to get it in their arms. Back testing. But you'd need it in so much food. Yeah, you would. But... See that symbol? It's everywhere in part two. Why can't you recognize that symbol? Pergus Holdings, they're massive. Like Kraft or Nestle, and they manufacture everything from crisps to fizzy drinks to pet food, and that is their logo. They then theorize the vaccine for the Russian flu is weaponized and is not the flu itself that's doing the harm. But what we are doing is right. Did you, did you say right? Brown people, white people, Jews. I assume you're referring to Carvel's supposed paper on eugenics. But Carvel was misunderstood. Yeah, just like Hitler. He wasn't talking about race, he was talking about survival. We've now passed seven billion on this planet. When I was born, it was a little over two. Food prices are rising, oil is ending. When our resources end in 20 years, given everything that we know of our species, do you really think we're going to just share? So your answer to that is some kind of genocide? No, it is not. It is not genocide. Our answer to this is Janus. Janus consists of a protein and an amino acid. Independently of each other, they're harmless. But when they're brought together in the subject, they act as a genetic trigger that prevents chromosomal division. The cell targeted can no longer replicate itself and is thereby rendered useless. The change is permanent and hereditary. And which cells are targeted? Those that control fertility, Becky. The purpose of Janus is to sterilize. The purpose of Janus is to sterilize the entire human race. Episode 5. So the bad guy in the show, he explains that the planet is overpopulated and it's going to keep on growing exponentially and eventually the resources will end and will destroy each other. That's what, he's, that's what he thinks. Then he explains that they want to make everyone sterile so they can't reproduce. You're selling it to them! You only want it from me so you can give it to them! Okay, yes, all right. Look, I should have told you, but I fully intended to split the money. It sterilizes people, do you know that? So instead of stopping it, you just want to make money. 
Well, stop it. Why should I want to stop it? They're right. Of course they're right. We have to do it. They discovered that the vaccine was designed to stop people reproducing. It's hereditary and only doesn't affect one race of which the creator chooses. So the man who made this this uh, vaccine. They explain this more in more detail in season two, but uh, I didn't think it was important. So the flu was to scare people and then the vaccine is designed to do the real harm. In the show, in the show, not real life. I'm talking about a show. Uh, it's a TV show. I just wanted to share this TV show that I thought was really interesting. This, this is not what I believe is currently happening. Do you know what it does? It sterilizes people. 90 to 95 percent of the people who receive the Russian flu vaccine will become sterile. He later explains that 90 to 95 percent of people who take the vaccine will become sterile, um, leaving one race that the creator chooses, whoever made the vaccine. Dawson for stepping up production of the vaccine after Settler describing him as a national hero. He said that the health department's contingency planning has potentially averted a crisis that none of us could even bear to imagine. We're telling people to stay calm. Do not travel unless you absolutely have to. Keep children, the elderly, and the most vulnerable at home. We have a vaccine. I repeat, we have a working Russian flu vaccine and it will be going out tomorrow morning. Episode six, government enforcing lockdown and telling everyone that there's a, a working vaccine free for everyone. Obviously this is happening in real life too. The government has told us that they're enforcing this lockdown and there's fines if people go outside. And it's mostly just fear. It's, it's, all, it's all fear based. That's what's keeping us indoors is that we're afraid to catch, spread this virus to the people that we love. Um, we're af afraid of the hospitals being overrun. In some areas it seems to be happening. It seems to be that the hospitals are being overrun from what they're sharing with us. And then in other places, Hospitals are empty. Doctors being laid off because they don't need them. Maybe that just means that every being locked in doors has actually worked and that we're not overcrowding the hospitals. But yeah, anyway, this, I'm just talking about show. There's a future coming where billions of us are going to be born into poverty and we're going to murder each other in war for water, food, and oil. That's coming. Maybe in our lifetime. That was the enemy. What if the enemy's right? The good guys are debating whether the bad guy is right or wrong, explaining overpopulation will result in war, fighting for resources, which we're already kind of doing. Kind of, we're fighting for territory and, and oil. And then the season ends with the good guys burning the vaccine factory warehouse thing and destroying everything. It's a very, very fun show. I, I thought I would share these clips so you guys have like an idea of it. I didn't want to. I didn't want to share too much to kind of spoil it all. Uh, there's two seasons of the, sh of the show. The third season was cancelled, but there is a, a book apparently that that shares what happened in the season three. And um, I haven't read it, but I might go discover what was written. I just find it all very interesting. Like the news throughout the show constantly kind of drilling in fear with the red text and the red backgrounds. Like the talking head meant to look like an authority figure because they're wearing a suit. And yeah, it's just kind of drilling into everyone that we have to, we have to live in fear. Live in fear, stay indoors, all that stuff. Yeah, the show came out in 2013 and I can see why they didn't do a third series. If none of that made sense, basically there was a scientist who made a vaccine for a virus. In the show, the virus turns out to be fake. The vaccine was actually sterilizing the human population to try and stop people from reproducing. And it's hereditary, so their kids wouldn't even be able to reproduce. So it would have essentially taken the population down to what they said in the show, like 500,000. Which is absurd. There is enough space on this planet if we spread out a bit more and learn to bring water to deserts. That's an idea. And I think as the Earth starts to warm up a bit more, places like Greenland and Russia will start to defrost and we'll be able to use all that free land um, that will obviously displace, displace everyone in like the hotter areas like South Africa or middle of Africa kind of 
South America and like most of Asia will have to move north. But I think there's enough space for us all, I really do. I feel like my generation aren't really produ reproducing very much. I don't know many people that have had kids my age yet. And I believe that's because we don't want to bring people into a planet that isn't ready for them. I can't see myself bringing any children into this planet unless things get better. We're still at war. Different countries are still at war with each other. That doesn't seem very safe. That just mean, means everyone's like on egg. Uh, the climate's still heating up. So like everything's gonna start changing. Like, like even whales are starting to change. The weather here is different to how I remember it as a child. Something weird that's happened that I'll mention in this video and I was gonna go into detail on my second channel. But um, since lockdown has happened three months ago, uh, it's only rained nine days. Nine days and three months in Wales. That's very unusual and quite concerning grass is all turning brown, um, plants are struggling, vegetables are struggling, and I believe it's just probably got something to do with the pollution that we're producing. Because no one's driving and flying at the moment, we're not creating any like artificial clouds. So because of that, we're just getting a lot of sun, and it's very hot sun because the temperature of the planet is going up. But yeah, that's just a theory. So I just want to reiterate that I was just sharing a show that I like with you guys, my dudes. I think it is quite, it's quite freaky what they say in the show because it's very similar to what's happening right now. I obviously can't share my thoughts on it. I just believe that, sure, like they're not telling us the truth, sure, but who are they? I don't even think the government know what's going on. I think there's somebody else responsible for all, all of this. Just do your own research. You can obviously theorize in the comments down below. I'll be down there discussing with you guys because I love talking about this stuff and theorizing and just like, just trying to figure it out, you know, even though that none of us can know anything for certain, we don't know what the truth is. And I can't like direct you guys to just websites to watch or listen to, like, I don't know. If you wanna watch this show anyway, it's on Amazon. There's two series, uh, there's a lot of blood and violence. All we can do is like, be safe out there. Don't put yourself in harm's way. Go plant-based maybe. Going plant-based is like the best thing you can do for your body, your health and your mind. Get rid of all the toxins that we've been consuming our whole lives. Like. Start eating plants, drink a lot of water, get rid of soda, sugar, caffeine, all that crap, alcohol, like you don't need any of that in your body. The drugs you consume will trick you into thinking that you need them. It's very hard to get out of that mindset and once you go sober, you'll see what I'm talking about. The drugs aren't good for you, but they trick you. Like for me, my, my worst demon was caffeine. That thing tricked me into thinking I needed it, needed it every day to function. I became so dependent that it was very hard to quit four, five years clean from caffeine, five years clean from alcohol, sugar, refined sugar, I've been pretty much clean from. Like, I don't know if I've been consuming it. I haven't been so specific, but candy, clean from that. Yeah, just look after your bodies and keep your immune system strong. Fear is like the thing that will knock your immune system out the most. So like, don't be afraid. Go out in nature, enjoy the summer while, we, while we're still restricted. Who knows what's gonna happen? in the coming weeks, like everything keeps changing. It's, it's very fascinating. I'm trying not to be t too much of an anarchist. Like I'll, I'll happily sit indoors and just work on my, my craft. Like continue editing and filming, get better at it. So that when I come out of this, I can be like a really good filmmaker. That's what I want to do. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry this took me two weeks to make. Uh, it's just a bit, a bit lengthy of a project. Like we had to research this. Oh yeah, thank you to this person, this person, this person, this person, this person. Thank you to these guys from my Discord for helping me research this. I couldn't have done it without them. Um, they really saved me a lot of time and I appreciate them. Uh, if you want to join our Discord, link is down below. Discord.gg forward slash magic mushies. That will take you directly to the invite link to the Discord. And yeah, I'm there every day. If you want to talk to me, I'm in the voice chat sometimes. And uh, yeah. All right, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you're new. I'll leave a like on the video if you want me to make more conspiracy style videos. This wasn't really a conspiracy. This is just, I'm just sharing a show that I like. I wish I could share more of my thoughts, but I really can't. I don't want to risk getting the channel removed. So I'm sure you guys understand. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.